Gordon, you are Mr. Agri Machinery Ireland. Yes. And you are selling different machines all around the world, but the brand that you're wanting to focus on is A and W Trailers. Yes. How or what or who are they? <laughs> yeah. So. And who are you? <laughs> who am I? Is right. Yeah. Exactly. Um. So starting with me, probably. Uh, so Agri Machinery uh, Ireland is kind of uh, is my business and. My background would be mainly engineering, so... Now, define a wee bit more detail there, you know, give, come, <laughs> in, come into the business card detail there. Yeah, yeah. Me Mega who? <laughs> yeah, so the degree is in uh, mechatronic engineering. And break that into three or four yeah. sentences, what is that? Yeah, so mechatronic engineering is mechanical, electrical and electronic engineering. And it's only sort of new, it's only out the last 30 years, and it's kind of going with the trend of... Things aren't just are you, purely are, mechanical, are, things are, aren't purely... Are you trying to convince yourself you're still young here? <laughs> 30 years is a right way yeah. now, Martin, come on. The, the, name, the name Mechatronics, the name Mechatronics, yeah. So I have a degree in that, and then I would have worked in uh, construction engineering, would have worked in uh, mining engineering, military engineering, and then I finished up kind of in agricultural engineering with uh, JCB designing. So, fast so when you were saying to me that you've been working with uh, AMW trailers, right down to engineering and different ideas and different designs you really mean that you're not just a salesman here in this yeah correct so obviously the guys in the factory a and w so a is for adam and w is for valdek the two guys uh, that own the company we do influence the trailers an awful lot like between me and customers that's why the trailers look the way they do the guys are say a and w is kind of focused in in the factory and working away i'm out kind of talking to the customers looking for what they're interested in and the feedback is basically low loaders we want them kind of lorry low looking look, looking like lorry low loaders and so we worked with a few customers in great detail and to get them looking the way they are you know i can i can jump in here and say you know that is right because your triaxle silage trailer here um, you were saying to me, I'd love you to get that out, get us some testing on it, mm. give us some feedback. Uh, and we did that. And yep. uh, I went to Wallace Brothers and, and it went to them when the absolute worst part yep. of the bad weather. And I mean, we're not out of the woods yet here because yeah. since then to now, it really hasn't dried up much. No. I think there's spuds of planting around here, yeah. you know, but it's, that's only just. Yeah. So like, you know, they had it dragging it through yeah, <laughs> dragging it through the gutters for want of a better word and and you know the chatting to you there was some good feedback and I think even a couple of changes you took back even applied since that and that's the whole purpose of uh, testing but why hard ox in a silage trailer? It gives it a cleaner looking trailer it's a sleeker looking trailer and strength and weight ratio it's a seriously strong trailer so that trailer gets a lot of strength from kind of three things one is the hard ox steel itself one is that it's the way it's folded, kinked and folded, and the other is kind of it's all set inside the trailer is all one sheet of steel. So kind of getting away from other kind of trailers is you get a lot of uprights inside of the trailer, and that's doing two things: it's giving you strength that we don't need, and it's whereas the giant and their sheets of steel together. So we just do one sheet of steel down either side and then one on the floor, and that gives us strength. It's a seriously strong trailer, absolutely. Um, so strength and then keeps it lightweight as well. Yeah. And in terms of specification, this particular one that we were looking at is a three axle with passive steer. It's not four steering, so it's one pa one rear steer. But you know, f Ireland, particularly maybe up in Northern Ireland, moving forward, I had said to you about the potential need for four steering, which is an option. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, yeah. oh, that's absolutely. what you were telling me, so you know, that's something that we can do. But what type of running gear are we running? I mean, if, if you're going for this strength of a trailer, I'm, I'm hoping you're backing that up with some top-end commercial running gear. Yeah, so kind of uh, grinding our hose, uh, from, a hose from this tag, and then grinding from knees. And that's so, like your 150 by 150 square axle on this trailer. Uh, tends to high-speed commercial axle, so they're kind of beefed up, the axles are kind of beefed up compared to your 127 mil diameter standard commercial axle. We went 150 by 150. Suspension wise, what's your thoughts there? Yeah, so kind of suspension is kind of beefed up as well. So your trailer is obviously spring suspension. Yes. This is air. full air suspension mm. on, a on a low loader, 
lift and front axle, two rear steer. ABS, yeah. ABS, flip toe ramp, and when the air is dumped and down, a six degree angle, did you tell me, mm. up onto the trailer? So this is your all singing, all dancing, this low loader. Yeah. Surely not everyone wants one of them. No, no, absolutely not. No, we done this to the customer's specification. By doing this low loader, mm -hmm. kind of shows people that we can do from the ultimate kind of low loader down to your normal kind of tri-axle. Um, that this covers everything. By doing this, this covers everything. So, for example, guys who this were is your show loader. <laughs> basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. We kind of, we kind of got a bit excited, so we did. We put a lot of thought into design. So the easiest thing for us to do was to get a traditional triaxle, uh, put the fourth axle onto it. By doing that, you were running into two, at least two problems. One is that the, the bed of the trailer was now going to rise up, and the other was the uh, maneuverability of it because you'd have a bigger um, tail swing on it. So the first problem was to keep the bed of the trailer. So that's a low, I know we have 19.5 tires on it, but compared to what it is, it's a low bed trailer. How we got that was our triaxle, our traditional triaxle has the cross members going across the yeah. chassis rails. And so you're lifting up the floor, but you know, that much roughly speaking. So we couldn't do it with that because the bed of the trailer would be too high. So we put the cross members out the side of the chassis. So your front left, two rear steer, and then your, your fixed metal yeah. axle. Great little feature, the steps up onto the trailer. I like that there, you know, cut into the side. It, right down to your boards that come out with the beacon on them. Yeah. Even the positioning of the spare wheel, I like. Yeah. Just things that if I was in a mess, yeah. in a situation that I needed to get out yeah. of, there's a handy way out and your drawers are pull out. Yeah, so they pull out both sides. And your grease points look very, you know, there's a lot of greasing on the way, you know, walking around that trailer, you're seeing a lot of grease points pulled out. Mm. And am I right that I spy hydraulic jack legs at the back? Yes. And again, the hydraulic jack legs, um, it's the thing we're going to be doing from now on. So we're going, that's what we're going to be doing from now on. But the traditional low loader would have like a, a foot leg on the bottom of it. So when you let down the ramps, you have a bit of a leg. But again, that was going to add to our tail swing. So this keeps, by taking the leg off the ramp and putting the, the solid leg on the ramp, we put the hydraulic one underneath and that keeps your trailer. But that, you know, that is, it's a very, very, very big loader. And I suppose it would be drawing a lot of attention up home. But in, in the south here and, and around the world, actual fact with the weights and measures, it's fine, it's perfectly fine. You can still put a good load on that and be well away within, yeah, and like, within you know, the legalities. Yeah, like in your your extra axle does give you, you know an extra braking force. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an extra axle holding you back and uh, maneuver stability as well. Um, and then maneuverability going through towns with that, it's a, it's it's, it's very maneuverable. Ireland is actually, in my opinion, quite forward thinking with its weights and measures. I would certainly one hundred percent question. Uh, the UK and Northern Ireland's weights and measures that they're not up to date with the modern tractor yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, the modern, the modern. Tra I mean, I stand by this. A, a triaxle trailer with a air brake and sus suspension system with a ABS on it is much safer than your traditional hydraulic braked yeah, yeah. Uh, trailer. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying it's much safer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you have a dump trailer. Twenty ton or so or? yeah yeah so we do kind of three ranges sort of we do from 16 upwards to 20 24 tons so um again all hard ox so six mil hard ox body the body's made out of two sheets of steel so less joints as well do you find the hard ox a harder sell this is maybe more on, on a personal level or as, as opposed to mild steel or do you think yeah. that people have now bought into the hard ox argument a lot more people are people will listen and they are coming around. Hardox gives you a, a lighter and stronger trailer. A dump trailer will always be Hardox for us. Six mil Hardox minimum. Well, your, your tri-axle silage trailer, we have seen in action, but you've went all out spec here, hydraulic top door dropping down for, for blowing over. Um, what kind of size is it? Can we just kind of go by 24, 24 foot? Uh, so 24 and bottom. Um, like that would that would hold the equivalent like if you had a straight up trailer it'd hold the equivalent of a 25 foot straight I would up agree, trailer. yes understand so, so yeah, she's 24 and then she's yeah sloping forward for that well you're making use of that extra space that's my yeah and it's just it's there take it you know 
Um, space is there, and then we have 26 foot in Australia. They're yeah, you have a few thing. of these in Australia. Yeah, so we've uh, we've we've two dump trailers. We've got them in Perth, and then we have these 26 foot version of them in uh, Australia. Loves the Irish trailer, don't oh, they? The, the Australian <laughs> guys are they're brilliant. So they are like we have them in Melbourne and Sydney, and they've there'll be a higher spec to be load cells and then there'll be uh, hydraulic covers um, two of them had control boxes so all the all the, the um, hydraulics were done in control boxes so the control box in the cab for all your hydraulics to simplify the hoses in the front and then you had another box and that was your dynamic load cell load cell so they're, they're dynamic load cell so when you load up the screen and the cab is changing all the time yeah. and then you do these here yokes like bit yeah, of forestry so yeah, so for uh, the a &W trailers, we've got the agency for the world, so we can ship anywhere in the world. Uh, and then the forestry trailer, we've the agency for Ireland for them, for Pharma. So Pharma would be one of Europe's kind of most popular kind of forestry trailers. That particular one is called T17. And so it's the biggest trailer they do, and then it's uh, the biggest crane to do. Uh, and it's remote control as well, so it's I ten point two meter. Should be some crack in around a row remote control, so you just yeah. can sit in the tractor and unload. Yeah, so you just have your traditional kind of two joysticks, and you just sit in the tractor. Some people stand outside, but I don't see why you'd want, you'd want to stand outside. So, well, look, Gordon, thank you very much for letting us uh, come down and having a look around. Um, yeah. Definitely, I think. A big thing about us at Grassmen, we are we are a great believer in you know the triaxle trailer in general, even moving towards silage. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll leave brands out of it, but I think it's ever. Oh, everybody, absolutely. Everybody knows. Yeah. We're very we're very much an advocate of that. I do believe they they run nicer on the ground. I do believe, you know, mm. I can see more and more and more triaxles getting about. Of course, there is that problem of manoeuvrability, but. We can now counter that yes. with putting the technology into it. And then the next problem is, yes, these bigger trailers do need, do need, you know, the likes of this tractor here uh, that's on the front of this, uh, uh, you know, a one seven five, you know, it needs a good tractor on Absolutely. it to control yeah. it. Yeah. But if you're getting the steering and manoeuvrability right, I do, I do think there'll be a very good market of that going forward. And yeah, no, certainly, know, like, um, like we had that with Wallace Brothers. And they're were brilliant like that, it went to them when absolutely every tractor and trailer had to get pulled through ground mm, like yeah. that's how that was extreme that's how extreme it was <laughs> yeah, and, and they were brilliant i must say that that they have some team of guys there and the operation they run is very slick guys. there's yeah. not many like them now but they, they they try and stay relatively humble oh humble but you, you wouldn't they're yeah, very not, humble they're, they're, yeah, <laughs> there's very not guys. many if you want something tested but they they will find the weak spot yeah. now but look Continued success yeah. and uh, thank you for inviting us down, Gordon. Cheers. Oh, pleasure. Thank you very much.